If you've been watching uh, the last few videos I've issued, uh, released, you'll see that I've been slowly putting together a uh, Byzantine army for the Lion Rampant supplement of Viking in the Sun and also the last Romans in Saga Age of Vikings. What's largely unlocked this for me in terms of cost and modeling potential are the uh, Fireforge games, plastics for the Byzantines, and so first we'll turn to the Byzantine horse archers. So you get two of these sprues in the horse archer box with six bodies, the legs divided into two with the torso, uh, and then half of them are loosing off an arrow having just done it, and some are in the middle of the loosing off, they all get a little shield, and then there are a good number of heads, nine heads, pretty good variety for six, and I think, I think they're supposed to be divided into more heavily armed guys, and heavily armoured guys, and some slightly less heavily armoured guys, but I just mixed them all up because in most rule sets they're just professional horse, ar horse, horse archers, you know, as opposed to the kind of light horse archers. And these clearly aren't light horse archers. And these are the horses on their sprue for the horse archers. And you can either make them totally unarmoured or with quite heavy armouring around the head and the sides of the front part of their torso. So what's interesting about the Byzantines is that their horse archers aren't lightly armoured. They're part of the Tagmata, the professional mounted soldiers, who are kind of permanent troops, whereas I think they're the infantry are just kind of local auxiliaries, whatever they are. And they get a coat of chain mail, or scale mail, a helmet, a bit of extra armor around their limbs, and they carry a small round shield, as well as the bow. And the, the horses, which I found quite cool, could be quite heavily armoured up front. So they get half the armour of the full cataphract, which is still quite a lot. I suppose they can breathe through the back. And they've got chain mail. And I don't know if I've cocked up by making them all point the same way. I mean, there are another six, so I can still give a bit of variety. With these, I kind of cocked up as well, that. I think only, I assume that all of the horses' halves would match with each other, but they don't, only some match with others. So do dry fit first. And they have this, this slightly the same problem that the uh, cataphracts do in terms of the horses not all having an amazing amount of contact with the ground, but these were generally better. But I'm open to being told that I've messed up generally. There were no instructions, you had to just work it out. It would have been good if they allowed you to position these so they could shoot backwards. The problem is if you, if you position the guy facing backwards is his torso doesn't line up. Well, I don't think it would, I can try, but I think it would, bits would sit on the front and the back, sticking out in an abnormal manner. Now, however useful or not they were in real life, who doesn't love the look? of a properly tooled up cataphract. And so we turn to the Fireforge games, Byzantine cataphracts. Here are the cataphract, heavily armored cavalry, horses, You've got three horses and three tails. And you've got six different head options for the cataphract riders, three shields, 
legs split and they have a choice of maces or these lancers. And now we come to my favorites, the Klibanophoroi or cataphracts, reintroduced into the Byzantine heavy cavalry by Nicephorus II in the 10th century. They were basically copied from the Sassanid Persian heavy horsemen and the empire had loads of cash at the time to pay for them all. They were entirely covered by mail armor and iron plate over a quilted cotton hauberk. A small shield and a helmet completed their defensive equipment. They also had a sword, which I haven't bothered sticking on because of what I said before, who cares? And I was looking at a sword. And obviously the fun bit, a three meter long lance. And the coolest part as well, the horses are protected by metal armor and quilt and cotton under armor, make and making these guys in most rules hit like a truck. But reflecting the historical reality, making them a bit slow um, and getting fatigued pretty quickly because in real life, in the hot parts of the world from which they came, you know, they, if you, if you could get them close to the enemy and pile them in early enough in the battle, I think they did well, but otherwise they just started to get tired. The horses got tired and I imagine what happened and I think did happen is, you know, the light, light horse archers, with their little composite bows would gallop around these guys having made them charge until they got tired and then just cut them down with loads of close range arrows but just quite out of range of the three meter contarion. Now these were not, these were pretty, well, these were fine to make. There was only, I only have one complaint which I think, which does feel ungrateful given how amazing it is to have affordable cataphracts of this quality and that problem is that for the most part I don't know how they thought this was enough contact at the bottom there between the feet and a base to get these to stick permanently and if you look at all the horses I've done you know they don't stand up straight because what I think they should have done and they all I'm gonna end up breaking these off because they all seem to be leaning to the left and as you can see they're not actually that hard to bust off which is not what you want. So I think what I'm gonna to have to do is either drill a hole into the one or two feet, well, the one foot that actually is contiguous with, flush with the base. I mean, with this one, what am, I, you know, what am I supposed to do? Or get a piece of green stuff, which I kind of did with this horse, because it's a problem as well for the horse archers, so that at least one foot, so at least two feet, are flush with a base. But I think they just thought that plastic cement would sort this out, kind of fusing it with the base, but you still need to have a wide enough contact point. But anyway, that just feels churlish because these are gorgeous. And this fellow is going to be my commander until I invest in a proper one out of resin or metal. And that head is from the Frostgrave Knight's Sprue, male knight Sprue, which shows you how compatible in size these are. All right, you can see that a bit of green stuff does resolve the position at the back of most of the horse's feet. You'll see that one or two of the little hooves have been um, made more flush with the base by putting a little piece of green stuff and a bit of super glue. I'm sure they will hold just fine. Thank you for watching to the end. Uh, by all means, drop me a comment if you have any thoughts on, for example, how to make the horses stand up more upright in a more robust fashion. And do subscribe and uh, I'll post up how any games go and what will be, no doubt, a very slow process of getting these painted up as the years go by. Have a great day.